Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwenza Garden in Ireland and today I'm taking the day off from weeding. As you can see, lots of work going on here and we all have that one border or bed in the garden that we absolutely hate to do and this one here, that's my least favourite of them all which is why I leave it to last and that's just not a good idea at all. Anyway, speaking of good ideas and good advice, today's video is all about the six pieces of advice that I would give to gardeners who are starting out. Now, this isn't textbook. It's just stuff that I've kind of picked up as I've gone along and remembering back to when I started out and what made sense to me. So if you want to hear about these six pieces of good advice for new gardeners, then let's get on with the video. Hello, you're very welcome to this video all about the six pieces of advice that I'd give out to gardeners who are starting out on their exciting new journey. Perhaps you've just recently gotten your first garden or you've decided it's time to do something with the space you already have. Well, perhaps this video is going to be of interest. Before we start, I just want to point out one plant that's here behind me and it's that pink flowered one. Darmera peltata which I think is just such a gorgeous gorgeous plant and it looks fantastic now in May and what I really love about it is well the pink flowers are very welcome but it's a plant that has a bit of an identity crisis because it starts out as one thing and then it completely transforms into something else as the season goes on. So at this time of the year you have the pink flowers and they rise up from the dinosaur feet. The roots I really feel look like dinosaur feet trying to break out of the earth very very <laughs> interesting and primordial look about it which is great to point out to children and to grandchildren but as this plant progresses through the season then it produces large round leaves which are completely at odds with how it presents earlier on anyway a gorgeous plant one i absolutely wouldn't be without and the fact that we've had very wet spring and very wet autumn has really helped this one do well but i digress because this video is meant to be about the six pieces of advice i'd give out to new gardeners now this is a kind of informal video because this isn't stuff that you will find in the textbooks well some of it perhaps is and it's also very personal it's what i feel has worked for me but the first thing that I will say is don't be afraid and I think that's very important when you're starting out. We're also apprehensive because we don't know anything. We don't know about plants. We don't know about soil. We don't know about aspects. We don't want to make a mistake and people enter in tentatively. And it's just not right. I think you should just throw yourself in there. And that's where perennial plants are really useful because I would suggest buying lots and lots of different perennials and trying them and see how they go. Like you can't really make a mistake with a perennial plant. Okay, don't spend a lot of money for it because it might die because you put it in the wrong position, but try out different types of perennial plants. Also try out bushes and trees. Now, of course, if you put a bush or a tree in the wrong place, it does have consequences, but you have to embrace the fact that you are going to be moving things. <laughs> You're not going to get everything right. You're going to have a bush that's, you know, too close to the house or even a tree that grows too big. So a very good time to buy short-lived bushes, things like uh, cistus or cytisus or hebe even, ones that aren't going to last longer. And then, you know, you can plant them closer together than they should be in the knowledge that over time that's going to, um, it's going to die and leave you space. Or, you know, it can be that you're going to have to remove things. 
I think the most important thing when you're starting out is to just go for it. Yes, read books. Yes, find out information, but really just go for it. And the same thing applies to cutting. And people are very apprehensive about pruning when they start out. They say that gardeners are divided into two groups, those who cut and those who don't dare cut. So if you're the kind that's always cutting things back, always lopping branches off your trees, then they say, pull back, do it a little less. But if you're the kind, and this generally applies to new gardeners, who's afraid to cut because they might get it wrong, I would say, you know, yes, just do look up the information about the bush. When is the right time to prune it? But sometimes that information isn't there. And if it's not there, well, just try, have a go, see what happens. You're going to learn so much from that. And that's what it's all about. It's about learning. And the more you can learn, the better. And the more quickly you're going to progress and your garden is going to progress. So try, try out lots of new things. And now the second piece of advice I'd give to new gardeners is to swap plants. Get in touch with any amateur gardeners you can. Join a club maybe, swap, swap, swap. Always accept plants from people, try them out, see how they do, see what you like, see what you don't like. It's all about that excitement and learning as you go because there is endless stuff to learn about gardening. I mean, I've been gardening for decades now and there are always new plants out there that I need to learn about, always new techniques to investigate. So it's not just you who don't know stuff. Everybody doesn't know stuff, but we learn as we go. And then the third piece of advice is to keep lists. So get books and keep lists. Books are brilliant, gardening books are brilliant. And you can join your local library. Here in Ireland anyway, you can get very expensive gardening books on loan and they are just wonderful. You can decide on the basis of that, whether you want to buy the book or just take notes from it. And I would say to keep two sets of notes, one set, of notes would be plants that you're looking out for. So the names of plants that you want to source, that you want to try out in your own garden. And then the second list, which is also quite important, is a list of everything that you have bought, everything that you have, and maybe set up a kind of spreadsheet to keep track of this. So something like the plant name, the common name, where you bought it even, where you've planted it, the date, and this is, and if it dies, then when it died. This is all really inf important information that you're going to draw on later. Um, so for example, if something dies for you, then uh, you get it again at a later stage, you can check back as to what exactly went wrong and you're not gonna plant it in the same place again, that's for sure. Another important tool at this stage is to get your hands on some kind of gardening magazine. The gardening magazine will tell you what to do at what time in the season. YouTube videos are great, but they don't necessarily do that. There are online magazines, there are paper magazines like the Irish Garden magazine that I write for. and. These are very useful to kind of keep track of what you need to be doing when. So moving on to the fourth piece of advice that I have for beginner gardeners, and it relates to weeding. Now, if you look at the television, if you look at the internet, if you look at social media, the big emphasis seems to be on fertilizer. And the reason for that is that companies sell fertilizer, so it's something they can make money out of. But I will say to you that much more important than fertilizer is weeding. Now you need to keep your plants weed free, especially in the beginning. And this is so much more important than getting your soil exactly, exactly right or 
in terms of giving your plants fertilizer. Now, yes, okay, you can't plant a cactus in a bog garden, you can't plant a Saracenia on a sandy mound, but generally speaking, you don't have to stop completely until you get your soil exactly right. And years ago, I remember talking to a fellow gardener from a gardening club who said that she didn't plant a single thing in her garden until her soil was the consistency of chocolate cake. So basically, she enriched it, enriched it, enriched it with manure and compost and goodness knows. And eventually she came to the point where I think she could actually eat the stuff and then she started planting. Well, that's great. That's really good for her. But I think most of us would lose patience long before that point in time. I know I certainly would. And I think it's so much more important to have a go than to wait, 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 wait for the ideal circumstances, the ideal situation, because that just might never come along. You might have other things to do in your life and that chocolate cake just never materializes. So back to the point again, which is weeding, which is something within your control, something that you can do, is more important than fertilizing. And it is really quite important to success, certainly when you've got a new kind of virgin terrain that you're trying to get on top of. And then my fifth point is something that I've learned through experience. And personally, I would say to any new gardeners, don't plant anything prickly. <laughs> and I say this because I actually knew it when I started out. I knew not to do this. I knew I had small kids. I knew that um, I didn't like weeding around things where prickly that were prickly, but I did it anyway. I have a Berberus in the garden that just looked so innocuous when it was a small little shrub with its salmon pink new growth. And it did have thorns, but I thought that could never be anything terrible. But now it's a big bush that nobody wants to go near. It gets pruned once a year and like, and the prickles picked up, but generally I'll avoid that section of the garden with a barge pole if I possibly can because I don't want to get those thorns in my hand. And the same for the yuccas that I planted in the garden. Oh, they're beautiful when they're in flower. The architectural form of the leaves is also wonderful, but my goodness, you really have to be careful when you're re weeding around the base that you don't get one of those thorns in your eye. So I would say don't plant anything prickly with the possible exception of roses. Now I'm not a big rose fan myself, but I do appreciate that roses have a lot going for them. If you can fertilize them, okay, we said weeding rather than fertilizing, but with uh, roses, that's one of the few plants that you really, really must feed. So if you can get that right, then roses can be extremely rewarding because they do have a long season of interest. And finally, moving on to my last bit of advice for new gardeners. And I think this is the most important thing for me. And it's the thing that really got me going. Now, when we start out, as I mentioned before, we're afraid, we're afraid of making mistakes. So what people usually do is they start with the perimeter of their garden and they decide, well, you know, I want a bit of privacy. I'm going to plant a hedge or some trees around the very outside of my garden. And if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter because it's very, very far away from the house, far away from the action. So they do that, but unfortunately, out of sight means out of mind. And I really don't think this is a good way for anyone to learn about plants or to learn about gardening. On the same track, I was at a gardening event a few years back, giving advice on um, the hub table, the Irish garden hub table at Bloom. And I was there with a very well-known gardener. And I 
was listening to the advice he was giving as opposed to you know what I was giving because you're in a small, small space everybody hears each other and somebody came to him with the the same question they wanted to know what was the best way to get going as an amateur gardener and the advice he gave was to start with shrubs and he said shrubs are great because um, they're less pr prone to mistakes and so buy some shrubs, research the shrubs, buy some shrubs, plant them in your garden. And if you enjoy then pruning them a bit, seeing them come into flower, then after a season or two, you might decide to try something else, try some perennials, try some annuals, try some kind of uh, herbaceous borders. And it seemed to me quite good advice, but, and perhaps it is excellent, advice for many people starting out there but from my point of view that didn't work and I would never have gotten going with gardening if I'd been relying on shrubs to show me the way to inspire me to ignite that spark and the way I started out and the way I highly recommend to to people is to plant something beautiful and plant something that you love and plant it right by the house, right where you're going to see it every day. So perhaps outside your kitchen window. In my case, it was outside the patio doors in the kitchen. So we have patio doors, they look out onto the garden and I wanted to see something amazing out there. And I would strongly suggest starting with perennials or annual, something that you personally find beautiful that excites you. And I bought a purpose border online. So this was a, um, a, a, a set of bare root plants that arrived and they arrived with instructions of how far to, apart to plant them. So dug the bed, planted them and they were right outside my patio door and my goodness those plants they got me out there every day for that whole summer kind of watching them poking up and then waiting for them to come into flower and then watching them go over and I feel working with something like perennials you get a much more tangible understanding of the seasons and what's involved in gardening than you ever might by uh, buying bushes or planting trees around the perimeter of your garden. So I really highly recommend that. Now you can have a small space outside your window. It doesn't have to be big. Certainly don't bite off more than you can chew and don't be all het up about the design and that you're going to ruin the design of your garden by putting a bed right there. You know what? Designs can be changed. You can grass over it later if you want to. You can tarmac over it. <laughs> Designs are fluid and you're not doing anything permanent at this stage with a few perennials. All you're doing is igniting that spark and getting you going. So I do highly recommend something gorgeous right where you can see it maybe scented even so that the scent is going to waft through your window when you have it open and just get you going get you going on this wonderful wonderful hobby that i think is so good for us in many ways and when you have a beautiful sunny day like this in may i certainly certainly recommend it so that's I guess all I'm going to say in terms of advice <laughs> uh, yeah um, if you have any good pieces of advice then please do jot them down below in the comments I'd love to read them and I think yeah I think I've said just pretty much everything I, I, I want to say. Also don't spend a fortune on plants in the beginning. As I said um, get to know other gardeners, swap plants, grow annuals from seed. Yes annuals. Don't try anything hard. Grow annuals from seed and that is going to ignite your spark and make you feel so accomplished as well when those come into flower. So don't spend a fortune. Spend small. 
but by lots and lots of different things and just expand your familiarity with them and your portfolio and get let you get to know the different areas of your garden okay that's all for the moment thank you as always for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope i will see you on the next video which will be next thursday thanks for watching bye <laughs>